Hi, I'm Dave from Hector Smokehouse, and today I'm going to be smoking a share Wagyu brisket, hot and fast, on the Gateway Drum Smoker. Hi and welcome to the channel. If this is the first time you've um, been on Hector's Smokehouse, then welcome on board. And I hope you click the subscribe button down at the bottom. And if you enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're a returning subscriber, then welcome back again. I'm happy to see you. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a, a brisket video. And this is gonna be um, part of the series that I've already done with regards to the Gateway Drum Smoker. So the first video I did on the Gateway Drum Smoker was um, looking at doing a review of all the different features and the link should be up here in the top corner and um, so you can watch the gateway drum and what the gateway drum is about the second video I did on the gateway drum was actually looking at um, how to light it how to season it and also a temperature control and again if you look up at the top here now I should have clicked put a link in there and you should be able to see a link so you can actually look at that part of the gateway drum video as well so normally I cook my briskets low and slow, around about 225 degrees F, and they normally take me probably around about 10, 12 hours to actually cook. This time, I'm gonna be cooking it a lot faster. This is going to be a hot and fast brisket, and cooked on the gateway drum, around about 300 to 325 degrees F, and I cooked one last week, which came out really, really nice, and that took me around about four and a half hours to cook, so it was much quicker than the normal way that I do briskets, and it had a really nice bark on there as well. So what I'm going to do in this video, and um, this is going to be a, a pretty simple Texas style brisket, very little trimming on there. I'm going to use um, some Worcester sauce, garlic powder, um, salt, pepper, and also some paprika. So it's going to be very simple and then I'm going to split that, that brisket up and um, just cook it like normal. So I'm going to show you that this week. Over the coming weeks and, and months, I'm going to do a lot more brisket videos. So I'm going to do one which is going to be looking at um, cooking a full pack of brisket first and then splitting the um, point off and turning it into burnt ends. Once that video is there, you should be able to see a link up at the top. Um, the next video is going to be actually before I cook the brisket, separating the point and the flat and cooking the point separately to the actual um, flat and again making burnt ends out of there. So hopefully that video should be up here once it's actually done. And then I'm gonna do some brisket videos with regards to um, dry aging. So I'm gonna dry age a couple of share Wagyu um, briskets over the coming months, one probably 30 days and I'll see what that's like. And then I'm also gonna dry age a brisket for 60 days and see what that's like as well. So if you enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to the channel, and please also click the, click the uh, notification bell at the bottom, and then every time I put a new video up, you should get an email about it. Right, let's get on to it. So there we go, I'm gonna trim the brisket for you. This is a Cher Wagyu brisket from um, Victoria in Australia. I've sort of done this before um, on a previous video, but it's probably three years ago. So I'll re-go back through it again and, and explain um, the different parts of a, um, a brisket and then go into a simple trim um, and, and how to put on the different rubs. And all we're gonna do in this one is we're going to be using binder, which will be um, lean Perrins Worcester sauce. We're then gonna put a layer of garlic powder on. So this is, just um, from Kirkland, so Costco. Then we've got some kosher salt and some ground pepper, and that'll also go onto there. And then we'll finish it off with a little bit of um, smoky paprika. You can either go sweet or pecan, whichever one you want, but you can use either or. Uh, this time I'm gonna use a little bit of pecan. So yeah, so you can go through the different parts of your briskets. This is gonna be very straightforward. So. What we've got is there's two muscles in a brisket. This top muscle here is called um, the point. 
This is a little bit more fatty. That's where the burnt ends come from, which is pretty tasty. And then underneath there, so underneath at the bottom, underneath here, this is called the flat. So as I flip this over, you'll be able to see this is the flat running across here. And then the point is at this end um, and two very different muscles. And in between there's a big fat layer that runs in between them. So you can, if you want to, you can actually separate the point and the flat before you cook. You can leave them together. If you're making bent ends, the bent ends are coming out of this nice fatty part, this um, point part. So you've got a choice of which way you want to go. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna give the bottom of this a nice trim. This is the bottom of the flat. This is gonna go face up in the gateway drum. So I'm gonna put this up facing the top and we're gonna have where the most amount of fat is facing down onto the gateway. So we're gonna trim all of this fat off here. I'm gonna tidy this up, put a bit of shape in. I'm gonna cut a piece off running across here, which is going to show, you can see the different line of the, of the meat going through there on the actual flat. When I actually cut the brisket, I want to be cutting this way across the, the actual um, strands of meat. So there's little short pieces of, of, of meat, which means it's a lot easier to chew and not big, long stringy bits that are, are more difficult to chew. So I'm gonna cut that so I know where it is. This piece you can either, and this piece off the end to tidy up, you can use those for um, something like, uh, can go into a, a chili, you can put it into a brilliant burger if you want a burger. And the other thing we also use this for is our dog gets this minced up and he thinks it is absolutely the best in the world. So um, this time I'll probably think I'm gonna actually put it into some burgers. So you cut these two pieces off. And then on the other side, which is the more fatty side, um, this is the, the point muscle. So we're gonna trim as much as we can off here because we want the rub to actually penetrate into the meat and sit there. You don't want it sat on the fat, it won't go through the fat. And then here, which is the top of the flat, we want to leave about six millimeters or a um, quarter of an inch of fat on there. And then we're gonna cook this with this side down on the gateway drum. Um, but you can see already in there, there's not a lot of fat on this. This has already only got four or five mil on there. So I'm gonna have very little trimming to do. I'm gonna have a little bit of trimming to do off here to expose the, um, the, the point for the, um, for, the, for, for, the, for the point part of it to get the rubbing. I'm gonna take a little bit off here. Um, and then here you can actually, if I turn this around in here, you can actually see this is where the point and the actually flat separate. So this is a big fat layer that runs in here and you can either do it afterwards if you want to have burnt ends, and I'm gonna do a video on burnt ends later. Um, you can do it if you've got a pair of cotton gloves on and then a pair of these on. After you've cooked the brisket, you can put your hand in there and just separate it with your hand, and the two muscles come apart really easy. Um, or you can sit down and do it beforehand. This meat comes down to here, so you're gonna take off here and then that peels back, and you separate the two pieces and take the fat off there. But that's the start of where it actually um, the two pieces of meat have the fat layer running between, the point on the top and the flat underneath. And obviously what this is, the brisket, this is actually off the um, chest of the cow. And the reason why you're doing it low and slow is because it's a hard working muscle. So on, a, on, a, um, on any steer or beef or whatever you want to call it, um, the muscles that they use a lot are typically going to be the ones that are more tougher and they're going to be the ones that are used for uh, low and slow cooking. Whereas down someone's down the spine of a cow, uh, the backbone where you've got the tenderloins and the scotches, they don't get a lot of work. So that meat's really tender. But the hard working meat, things like beef cheeks. So if you get a beef cheeks, you've got to do them low and slow because you know they're chewing all the time and chewing the cud. And that means that, that those muscles are really tight and really tough. So you only release them by cooking them low and slow. And that's the same with the brisket, the chest, where the cow is walking. Um, that gets a lot of exercise, so therefore that's a tougher muscle as well and needs the low and slow cooking. So that's what makes these things wonderful. So what I'll do now is I'll go through and show you the trim. Um, I'm not gonna do a great deal of talking. Um, if I need to talk about the odd thing, I, I will do that, but um, I'll just go through and actually show you what I do to trim this. It's gonna be a very, very light trim in this instance. So to do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on here. I'm gonna start to take some of this um, fat that's actually on top of the point and trim that off first of all. So you need a good sharp knife to do that. Um, if you can always try to sort of trim the meat away from you if you can, 
if that's possible, um, because you don't want knives coming towards you. So what I'm going to do is just start to take that off there. And then you can see it starts to expose it, and that's where you're going to get your rubs um, to actually take hold and get into the flavour of the meat. So this instance I'm doing it very simple, keeping it simple I'm doing salt and pepper and um, garlic powder and paprika. But if I'm doing a competition then I'm using a lot of different rubs and flavours. I also do trim, uh, sorry, also do inject in a competition. But when I'm at home it makes, when you're doing a competition it makes the meat very, the, the meat is very rich and you're trying to get a judge on uh, a one bite. You know, you're only trying to impress him with one bite of the meat. So it needs to be pretty powerful and, and get an impact immediately. But when you're actually cooking at home, um, I find that I can't eat a lot of competition brisket. But when I'm at home and I do brisket this way with just the salt pepper rubs on, um, I can eat a lot more of the meat. So it's a lot better for um, eating a reasonable volume. Um, but if I'm in a competition, then I am going to inject it and I'm going to use a lot of different rubs. But when I cook at home, 99% of the time, this is the way I do it. Very straightforward, simple and easy. Okay, so to be totally honest, I'm just about there. I've got most of the meat off this point end, uh, the fat off this point end, which is pretty good. Here you've got the bit of protection. There's only five to six millimeters on there, if that. So there's not really anything to trim off um, this side. So this is on top of the flat. So what we'll do now is we'll spin it over and we'll start working underneath and cleaning the flat up as well. So again, not a great deal to come off here. These are pretty well trimmed, these ones that I get in Australia. The part I'm gonna do is here, like I've, I've talked to you about, you can see the way the meat is running. And when I cut this, when I've cut it at the end, I wanna cut it this way. Now you can really see these um, striations running through here at the moment when it's uncooked. But once this is actually cooked, that disappears and it's really difficult to understand which way it's running. So what I do is I'll take a piece off here and it gives me the direction and I'll just run it across the opposite 90 degrees perpendicular to there. So I can see where they are and I'm gonna take a reasonable piece off there. And that'll come off and as I say, that can be used as amazing beggars um, or you can use it for your dog or you can use whatever you want. And you can see there's probably just over a quarter of an inch there and there is a little bit of marbling in this um, brisket, in this Wagyu brisket, which is awesome. Um, so now I know when I cut this, I'm gonna start cutting it this way when I start. Also at this end, I'm just gonna trim, a, this gets a bit thin, so I'm gonna trim a little bit of that off and that'll be another piece that goes into the burgers and I'll look after, I'll keep that afterwards. So that piece there will be used for burgers as well. So I've got a nice piece that I'm gonna start cutting this way and then I've got the point on top of that. Now to actually get into taking this off underneath here and getting the rub into it, get your hand underneath and you need a sharp knife, but then you just wanna be just taking it off lightly and not having to cut too deep. If your knife is not sharp, um, then you're gonna have some troubles actually taking this fat underneath there or these, um, um, or the, the silver skin that's actually underneath here. You just need to be lifting it up with your hand and trimming it back and taking that extra level of fat off there so your rubs can penetrate the meat.
So what you can see here is this is where the, the fat line, where the point and flat um, go together. That's the fat line there. So you're not going to really be able to get into there unless you're trying to separate. If you were separating it, you'd go into there. But this isn't for a competition. This is just to cook at home. And to be honest, that's not far off being cooked, uh, being trimmed up okay. I'll just trim a little bit out of there and then we'll get on to doing the rub. Um, but it doesn't need to be anything special. If you was in a competition and you was using this, you probably, the six slices or so you'd be doing would be coming out of this area. Um, so that's a reasonably nice area in terms of that. But yeah, what we'll do is just trim a few more pieces of this hard lumpy fat out of there and then that'll be good enough for us to start applying the rub to. So just in here, this is the, the area between the point and the flat. There's a bit of extra fat in there and it's quite hard fat. So we'll just trim that back a tiny little bit, but we don't need to take a great deal off there. So I think that'll do. And you can see, you know, that's that, this is the point muscle there. And that's gonna go through there, the fat layer going in. And so this, all of this is the point. So when you think about it, um, what we've done is we've trimmed the bottom and we've given ourselves a direction of how we're going to cut. So we're gonna cut along there, but once we get to here, you can see this muscle starts to run that way. So as you get to there, you wanna be starting to cut in slightly different direction going across and the top of the point. The other thing you can realize from doing this is that um, you can start to understand why um, brisket is so expensive when you go into a barbecue store, because um, what you can see here is, apart from the little bits I've got that are offcuts, get quite a lot of waste coming off this. Um, so once you've got that waste and you've then started to cook it and it starts to um, get smaller and shrinkage, then your actual yield out of this is a lot lower than what it is when you actually buy it. So there's a lot actually goes into doing these and that's why this meat is so expensive when you go into a barbecue joint. It's a lot more expensive than what you'd expect it to. Um, but to me, this is one of the best cuts. So what we'll do is we'll get on now and we'll start getting into applying the um, binder and then we'll put on the rubs as well. So when this goes into the gateway, it's going to go in um, with the fat side down, the point side down into the. So that's going to be the side that I actually put the rub on first. Then I'll spin it over, do the other side, and then it's as simple as lifting it onto the, um, the grills once I put it into the gateway smoker. Um, what I'm using at the moment is these are from these trays, these disposable cutting boards are from Smoky Mountain uh, in the US. You can get them across in here in Australia as well. I think they're imported through Grill Pro through um, Dave Sprig. Um, these are really good. I've used these in competitions and for lots of reasons over the last few years. And they're fantastic to easy way to clean up after yourselves. Um, I normally have some big aluminium trays that are bigger than this. And I normally do all my rubs and everything um, in those, but unfortunately with moving house, they're actually off site at the moment. I think my wife's just gone to get them, but they're off site at the moment. So what I've done is I've folded these edges up so I don't make too much of a mess. And I'm now gonna get into putting on the, uh, the different rubs onto there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is to start with, just to help to get the salt and pepper and the garlic and everything to stick to it, we're just gonna add a little bit of a binder. Some people use um, mustard, yellow mustard. Uh, some people just use water. Um, some people will use um, different types of oils. Um, I just use Worcester sauce normally on beef. I don't think it really matters. It doesn't get into the taste or anything, so you never taste it. Um, but it's just easy to get things to stick on there. So what I do is normally wear the gloves. Uh, one of them is my wet hand, and the other one is the one I try to keep dry if possible. So what we'll do is we'll start off with garlic powder and with all of these you can be quite liberal and beef takes a lot of this flavor on board so it can take quite a lot of salt and also pepper so you don't need to worry too much about have I put too much on it because normally it's it's pretty good so I just do the quick flick around the edges as well um, get around the side of the the point because that's a 
the best part of the brisket for me. I love the point side of it. So we've got that on. If you wanted to, you can even lift that a little bit and put a little bit in there as well if you want. So we've got the garlic powder. Next we're going to put um, salt and pepper. So what I've done is I've got um, some kosher salt and I've used four tablespoons of kosher salt to six tablespoons of cracked pepper. Um, so a little bit more heavier on the pepper than I am on the salt, but again, normally go quite hard in terms of um, the amount that I put on there. Brisket can take a good amount of salt. So there it is mixed together, the salt and pepper. So you've got that lovely color. And then all I do is just sprinkle it from a few inches away and just try to get a nice coating on there. And what you want is a nice Dalmatian type coating. So lots of black and white specks everywhere. Um, and as I said, it's still sinking lovely into the actual brisket. Brisket, as I said, can take quite a bit. So don't worry about um, being too, um, too conservative. You can see there's quite a lot actually going on here. So again, quite a little bit on the, the point part of it. You can do the edges, it's not mega, mega important to be honest because um, at the end of the day it's going to be too much flavour in there. You want the sides done more than anything else. So I think that's probably about right. And then obviously on this side here, there's a lot of fat as well. So again, it can take that side of it. And you need something to cut through the, the heavy fat in a brisket. So that's probably as much as I put on. Just give that a quick little pat down and then just try and finish it off with a bit of paprika so this one is the um, the hot piquant and just give it a bit of a, a little dusting of that I don't need heaps of it on but it also helps with a little bit of smoky flavor in there as well because obviously it is smoked paprika it doesn't need to be too much but I can really smell that now it smells lovely to be honest and um, so that's pretty good onto there so it's very simple very easy that's all it needs to be. So what we'll do is we'll spin this over and we'll do the other side, which is the, the side with more of the um, flat is on this side. So there you go. So that's nicely on there. So what we'll do is do the same. We'll do the Worcester sauce, garlic, salt and pepper, and finish it off with the pattern. more important around that point because your point doesn't have all of the fat on there we've taken it off so you get plenty of that flavor put a little bit in there as well and um, so the point's not as you know the point can take a little bit more of that and so I was not far off I had six and four so six tablespoons of pepper and four tablespoons of kosher and I'm just about right I think really that's all there is to it very simple very quick and easy and um, a lot easier than when you cook in a competition but to be honest I actually prefer this to what it's like when you do competition cooking I think this type of brisket you can eat a lot more of it so there you go that's it pretty much done and um, very simple just finish it off with that little bit of paprika again and then we're we're done and dusted We'll leave this to sweat up for a little bit to allow at room temperature to allow some of that salt to actually penetrate into the meat. And in the meantime, what we'll do is we'll get on to lighting the gateway um, and we'll, we'll light the gateway and then we're going to be cooking this at 300 to 325. And we're going to take it to around about 160, 165F. And then we're going to um, we're going to wrap it in some foil with a little bit of um, beef stock, and then we'll take it up to about 198. And once we get to that 198, we'll start checking the doneness and the feel with a thermopen, 
and probably peel back the foil so that we get a little bit more bark onto there because it might have softened up a little bit sweating in the steam inside the um, Sweating, sweating in the steam inside the uh, foil. So we might just take it off and let it firm up a little bit. We'll get the uh, firmness done properly so we can get the feel right. That could be anywhere between 198 and 210. Um, and then we'll take it off, rest it for two or three hours, and then we should be good to slice. So I've got the gateway heated up it's getting up to 280 290 what I'm going to do is put a few chunks of wood in there so what I've got in here put them in a few different places you can see where I lit it here and I'm going to move the wood around so those are pieces of apple I've also got a few pieces of cherry wood um, going into there as well so we'll put some cherry in cherry wood often gives it that nice um, color glow so you get that nice red color out of there so we'll stick a few pieces in there let it smolder over so they'll catch and start to smoke and that'll be the smoking wood we're going to use for this cook um, so yeah so what you can do is you can see that in there now I'll put in the the deflector so there's the deflector going in. We'll put the grate in as well. And then what I'll do is now bring out the um, brisket and put the brisket in there as well. So we're gonna put the brisket in point side down and that's the fat side down. That's gonna go up on the top of the grill. And then what we're gonna do is every sort of um, 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes, we're going to spritz it and give it a bit of a turn so we haven't got the same hot spot in, in the cooking area. So if you remember this is the side where I was I had most of the heat, that'll spread out so we'll keep moving it around. Try to put the point over that end because that can absorb more of the heat. Um, so that's over that side of it anyway but you shouldn't get too much of it because of the deflector plate that's in there. But this should be good to go. Every 45 minutes now we'll spin it. We'll take it, put a probe in um, later on, and we'll take it to about 165F. Then we're going to wrap it in foil, a little bit of beef broth, back in there, up to 198, 200, and then we'll just watch it and get the right feel. So we're 45 minutes in. I'm just going to give the brisket a quick spritz. So all I've got on this normally, um, I'll just use some beef stock or something like beef stock or maybe apple juice. And um, to be honest, I've gone a bit different on this time. I've got some vina cotta, um, some Worcester sauce, and just some water in there. So we're just going to put this on every 45 minutes and also spin this around. So we'll just keep it moist with that. And then very quickly, we'll spin it around probably about 90 degrees so to that and then we'll come back in another 45 minutes and we'll do the same again so the brisket has been cooking for about an hour and a half now and um, it's going quite nice you can see we'll just give it a another spritz that's looking pretty good there so that's an hour and a half in now. So it's starting to get a bit of colour. You can see a bit of bark developing, which looks nice. We'll give it a another spin. So we'll move it round again, about 45 degrees. So we'll, sorry, 90 degrees. So we'll get it round there. And what we're going to do now is I'm also going to put a temperature probe in so we'll put the temperature probe into the I'll we'll put it this way into the flat so this is an eye grill which will give me an idea around temperature and then all I'm going to do with this is go through the chimney stack so 
So I'll just go through the stack here because that's going to be open. And then that'll be the easiest way for me to manage it. If I can get it to go through, that is. There we go. So we'll put that back on. And we'll keep going with that. We'll put this into the eye grill. Going to port one there. And then I'm just going to stick it up there for now. And then I'll connect with the um, with my iPhone. At the moment, you can see it's around about 146. So I want to get it up another 20 degrees and then I'm going to be ready for wrapping it. So I'm thinking we're about an hour and a half in. I think I've got about another 20, 30 minutes left and then two hours. And I'll be about ready to wrap it, I think. The cook so far has been cooking mainly at around about 300. So it's been around about 290 to about 310 most of the way through the cook so far. So the brisket is now at 165 degrees F. Um, internal temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into some foil. It's getting close to the stall now. So I'll put it into the foil, add a little bit of um, beef stock and I'm going to put a bit of beef stock and vino cotta in there. Um, so that'll go into there. We'll wrap it up and we'll throw it back on again. So I'll just see if I can quickly whip this off. I'll take the probe out for a few minutes. And um, there we go. Put that at the side. And there's a the brisket looking really good actually. Got a bit of nice bit of colour on it. So I'm going to take that out and put that in here. Now what I've done is underneath this I've put a piece of, um, uh, I've, I've put a little metal rack underneath the foil and then I can lift it on that and actually put it onto the grill um, top on there as well. And it just makes it a lot easier for me to do that um, because rather than having to get hold of the foil. And especially when it's got fluid in at the end and I take it off the grill, I want to make sure that when I take it off, the bottom's not gonna stick and pull away and all that juice will fall out into the actual barbecue. So what we'll do, we'll fold this, start to fold this over. And fold it over nice and tight. Then we we'll go over that side as well. And then what we're going to do is pour some of this shoe in there. So this is beef stock and vena cotta. And it's just going to help with the steaming process and get some extra flavour into this brisket. So let's fold that over as well. Two more pieces under there. And pour them on top. Crunch this up, and there we go. That's got the everything in there. And as you can see, there's the tray I've put it on. So that's going to be a lot easier now. I can just put it onto here on the tray, and then when I've finished, I can lift this up a lot easier. So I've now got it in there. All I'm going to do now is um, get that temperature probe back in again. And what I'm looking for this time is around about a hundred and maybe 198 somewhere around there there'll be a reasonable temperature to go at and then everything is going to be about the actual feel of the meat once I've got it to that to that 198 so we've got it in there make sure everything's still open put the probe back in check the temperature See where we are, so that's about 155 it says there, so that's roughly where it should be. So that's in there now, make sure my temperature's set on the intakes. So around about there is gonna get me about 300. Now I'm gonna leave it in there, take it up to 198. Then I'm going to use a, a thermo pen and I'll start testing for doneness. I'll also probably peel back the foil to um, show the top and let the get a bit of, let the Top, top it had gone a bit soft, so I want it to crust up a little bit. And we'll do that for the last half an hour of the cook. So far, um, we're at 165 and it's taken just over two hours. So around about two hours and 10 minutes so far. So we're about at three and a half hours 
and um, the brisket saying 198F, um, which is obviously done, or close to being done. So what we've got to do now is really check the feel of the brisket and, um, and then carry on cooking it until it's actually finished. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the probe out because it's at that 198 and I'm going to use one of these. And um, this is um, a thermopen. I use this all the time. It's absolutely wonderful. Two things it does, it's going to take the temperature of here and it's also going to um, get me to understand the feel of how the brisket actually feels, which is really, really important. So we're going to peel some of this back. I'm going to expose the, this is called boating, and what you're doing is going to expose the brisket so you can actually see the brisket. Let's get rid of some of that juice out of there. So you're going to see the brisket in there. There you go. I'll just put some cotton gloves on. And what we want to do now is try and firm up that bark. You can see on the top that with the moisture that's in there, it's become a little bit um, a little bit softer and it's softened the bark. So we want to try and crisp that up for the next half an hour and then we're going to check the feel. So we're just going to boat this and you can see all the, the dew that's in there that we put in. And don't forget I've got this sat on um, a bit of a mesh tray, a cooling rack. So there you go. So you can actually see now that's what the brisket looks like. So what we're going to do is take the thermopen and start to check the temperature. And you can see, even though that probe I put in was about at 190, you see here 195-ish, it feels 200 there. It actually still feels got quite a lot of give in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this off now and I'm going to cook it and try and get this to crisp up and it's probably going to still take another hour or so to actually get it to that level of doneness. So we'll put this on. I'm going to set a timer for 30 minutes and in 30 minutes time I'm going to come back and check it which will be around about um, three and a half hours or so. So I'll come back in about 30 minutes and check it again and now even though when the temperature gets to that 198 to you know 210 I'm not really bothered about that now, I'm bothered about the feel. I want to keep checking that doneness, make sure that the doneness is right and it goes through like a, a butter, a knife through butter, so it falls through the meat. And I also want to make sure that I've formed that bark again on the top. So we'll come back again in 30 minutes time. So we're nearly up at four hours now. Um, you can see a bit more color, the bark starting to form again. So let's just, yeah, you see there's still quite a lot of Still got quite a way to go. So it seems to have evened up in temperature. I think because you cook it so fast, it doesn't really get to the temperature in the same way as what it does when you do low and slow. So that's probably about 185 now. So it seems to have come down in temperature, um, especially with unwrapping it. And it's still got quite a bit to go. So we'll give that another 30 minutes and see what we're like in 30 minutes time. So we're now at four hours and 20 minutes. Um, again, you can see the bark looking really nice. Still, yeah, still quite a bit to go. It's starting to get a little bit softer, but yeah, it's probably still another hour in there. This is gonna take, I reckon nearly five and a half hours, um, somewhere around there to get done. So we'll come back and look at, that and look at it in another hour's time. Okay, so we've been on the go now for around about six and a half hours. The last one I did actually took nearer to um, five hours, but I probably unwrapped it a little bit um, later than this one. So this one, um, I've unwrapped it quite early, probably a bit, bit earlier than I should have done. But what you can see now is, look at that, that's just falling into the meat. And that's what you're looking for. You can see 203, 204. A little bit more resistance there, but you don't want it to pull apart at this end. You don't want pulled brisket. So that's 202, 203. And the great thing you can see here is there's an absolutely fantastic crust starting to form on there. 
So the back is beautiful. That just looks absolutely gorgeous and it's going to be amazing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift this out of here. Um, I'm going to put it into a foil tray and then foil it over. And then what it's going to do is going to go into a Cambra, which is like an esky. So if you've got an esky at home, uh, a cooler, put some, um, some towels in the bottom, put the brisket in and then put some towels on the top. And you want to give it at least an hour. If you can give it more than that, two or three hours, that's good. Uh, I've done these with five and six hours in the Cambra. Uh, for competitions and they're excellent. But you can see a really nice wobble on there and everything. This looks fantastic. So what I'm gonna do now is lift it up and put it into um, another foil tray so that none of these juices fall around anywhere. So this is the foil tray that we're gonna lift into. I put, if you remember, I put the, um, I put a cooler underneath, a wired cooler underneath this. So the idea will be, hopefully, this should, fit into there with this wired cooler and can sort of close in a little bit on the brisket like so and then what I'm going to do is just get a piece of foil put the foil over close it up and then this is going to go into the camera and um, for an hour an hour and a half and then it'll be ready to serve so we'll pop this away and then in another hour, hour and a half's time, we'll be ready to serve this. Okay, so that's the end of the cook. It took probably about six hours, a bit longer than the last time I did it, but I probably opened it up a little bit too early. Um, so the brisket looks pretty good to be honest. Um, it's got a great back on it. Nice wobble on it. Um, Angus is going to be absolutely fantastic. So I think it's going to come out really well. Um, so yeah, so it looks really good. I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it's turned out. So what you can see here is this end is where I did that slice. So I'm going to cut it from this end and turn it this way. This is the brisket knife that I use. This is called a Mond Mondial. Um, there'll be a link on the bottom of my um, YouTube video. So it's, you can get it from Amazon and there's a link in there so you can get that from there. So let's have a look and see what this is going to look like as I slice this open. Oh wow, this is looking pretty good. Just these first pieces are looking pretty amazing. So I'm nowhere near obviously the, the point at this end, but let's just have a look at this and see what it looks like. And what you can see there is it hanging over my fingers and it's actually covering all, all my fingers and, and going right to the end. So yeah, you tend to see it there as well. Um, so that's a great looking brisket and well cooked. It shouldn't be sort of bowed out or anything like that. It should look more like this. So if you pull it, it should just pull apart easily. Um, let's try a pooch of that. Oh my word. That is wonderful. <laughs> I can sit and eat all of this. Um, absolutely amazing so this is beautiful it's got a really good bark on it really crisped up well and tastes fantastic we're going to put these into some turkish rolls with some um pickles and cheese and all of those type of things to finish it off and they're going to be amazing so hopefully um you can see i'll cut this a little bit more but hopefully you like the video if you did give it a thumbs up please subscribe to the channel and please hit the notification bell down in the bottom and uh, look forward to seeing you on the next video <laughs>